Our universe is a truly remarkable place, filled with both discovered and yet to be unveiled mysteries. Among the most intriguing, enigmatic, and genuinely frightening entities in the universe, many would name black holes. Many envision them as colossal vacuum cleaners in cosmic space, swallowing planets, stars, galaxies, and everything that comes near. But are they really that terrifying? In this video, you will learn how a black hole is structured, how they come into existence, and what happens if we were to fall into one. A black hole is an object whose gravity is so immense that any object thrown with any colossal speed will not escape into space but inevitably be drawn back. Let's, once again, consider the standard example of Earth. If a cannon fires a projectile with insufficient speed, it falls back to the ground, as depicted in trajectory, A. Trajectory C represents achieving orbit. To achieve this, the first cosmic velocity is required, approximately 7.9 km per second for Earth. However, to exit Earth's bounds and travel into open space, the second cosmic velocity is needed. For Earth, it's approximately 11.18 km per second, for Jupiter, it's 60.2 km per second. Back in 1783, John Mitchell hypothesized the existence of an object with properties such that its second cosmic velocity would be equal to or exceed the speed of light. In this scenario, just as a projectile cannot leave Earth with insufficient speed, such a dark star would be unable to escape even light. Additionally, he suggested that such an object could not be directly observed but only through its influence on other objects in its orbit. How do black holes come into being? More often than not, they are corpses of already deceased stars. In a star, two forces balance each other, the star's self-gravity, attempting to compress it, and the opposing force of nuclear reactions, expanding it. When a star dies, its fuel reserves deplete, and the expanding force disappears. Gravity then starts compressing the star. As a result, its density increases, and the gravitational pull around it becomes stronger and stronger. If it compresses to a radius smaller than a certain value, known as the Schwarzschild radius or gravitational radius, its density becomes so immense that it transforms into a black hole. If an object compresses to a Schwarzschild or gravitational radius, its density becomes so high that it turns into a black hole. Essentially, any object has such a radius. If we were to compress a human to dimensions 20 billion times smaller than an electron, we would get a black hole. In other words, a black hole can be created from any object by squeezing it to the required dimensions. For instance, our planet would need to be compressed to the size of a cherry, and the sun to a sphere 6 kilometers in diameter. Our sun will never become a black hole, instead, it will turn into a white dwarf, as discussed in the upcoming videos. However, stars heavier than the sun by more than three times can collapse under their gravity to the gravitational radius. This is why black holes can emerge from stars. However, the internal structure of a black hole remains a mystery. Under gravity's influence, all matter compresses into a single point, creating infinite density, known as singularity. Any object approaching singularity within a distance smaller than the gravitational radius cannot resist immense gravity and will inevitably be absorbed by the black hole. This happens inside the region bounded by the event horizon, a sort of black hole boundary. Interestingly, what occurs when you fall into a black hole? According to the general theory of relativity, in a strong gravitational field, time passes slower compared to areas with lower gravity. Therefore, an external observer will never witness you crossing the event horizon because, from their perspective, your time has completely stopped. Moreover, the light reflected off you will experience increasing redshift and fade away. Consequently, you will eventually vanish entirely from the external observer's viewpoint. However, something more exciting awaits you. At the event horizon, you will see, in an instant, an entire eternity pass behind you, during which planets and stars are born and die. If the black hole is large enough, you will traverse the event horizon, feeling virtually nothing. However, sooner or later, you will start stretching due to the non-uniform gravitational field, transforming into spaghetti and ultimately tearing apart before reaching singularity. Scientists refer to this phenomenon as spaghettification. The fate of the atoms comprising you, once they fall onto singularity, remains a puzzle. Now, it might be getting a bit frightening, but don't worry. The nearest black hole is 3,000 light years away, so reaching it is highly unlikely. Moreover, as it turns out, black holes, like their parent stars, are not immortal and will eventually perish due to the so-called Hawking radiation. According to quantum physics, particularly Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, vacuum is not truly empty. Pairs of matter and antimatter constantly arise but live briefly and annihilate. However, if such a particle pair appears near the event horizon, 
one gets absorbed by the black hole, and the other escapes into space. In the end, the saved particle appears as if it had been emitted by a black hole. For this to happen, the black hole must share a piece of its energy, and thus mass, for fairness. This process may last a very long time but is not eternal and leads to the black hole's complete disappearance. If you want to help a young astrophysical channel, then subscribe, hit the notification bell and give it a thumbs up.